Hi everybody, my name is Jeff, this is Loud. Um, welcome, I hope you guys enjoyed Star vs. the Forces of Evil, yeah, right? I know you're not here to see me, so I'm gonna invite the folks who actually had something to do with the show on stage real quickly. We've got Adam MacArthur, Gray Griffin, Dana Davis, Ryder Strong, Darren Nefsey, and Rachel Glover. Hello, everybody. Thanks for spending your TGIF hello. with us. Hello, hello. Um, now, I'm gonna start with a really, really simple question for Darren. Darren, I wanna know who is your favorite and least favorite actor to work with? <laughs> Such a simple question. Yeah, no. Such a simple question. No, obviously not going there. Um, actually, why don't we just go down the line, introduce yourself, tell them what you have to do with the show, and if you are a character, feel free to do it in character. Uh, hey, everybody, my name's Marco Diaz. Uh, <laughs> My real name is Adam MacArthur. Nice to meet you, kind of. And I'm Gray Griffin. I play Jacqueline Thomas. And I also play Queen Moon. <laughs> I'm Dana Davis, and I play Kelly. Dragon dogs are real. <laughs> I'm Ryder Strong, and I play Tom, who sounds just like this. <laughs> um, I'm Darren Nefsey. I created the show. Um, and I also voiced Starfan13, who was in that episode. And she sounds like this. So. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Rachel Glauber. I handle casting for the show. Very nice. Good panel. So, uh, Darren, what is your background and how did you get into animation exactly? Was that the route you were kind of heading toward initially? Yeah, um, I always, uh, I was drawing ever since I was a little kid and I was telling everybody I wanted to be an animator when I was a fourth grader. So it's kind of been a lifelong obsession. Nice. And, and um, what exactly inspired this... Uh, Interesting show's creation. Uh, and uh, how did it end up over at Disney XD? Oh my gosh. I mean, that, that's it's kind of a long, <laughs> it kind of be a long We got story. time. It's uh, Friday night. Nobody got to go to work. I, I mean, I, um, I, w I was pitching it actually since I was in college. Um, so I had been pitching the show for a long time. And in part, it's based on um, exper some experiences I had as a child. I was very obsessed with Sailor Moon and uh, kind of the character of Star Butterfly. I kind of wanted to do this sort of Sealer Moon, you know, princess. Yeah. And then it just kind of kept, uh, it kept evolving. It kept evolving and evolving and I kind of ended up becoming what it is now. And I pitched it uh, to Disney. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Like, like the timeline gets all crazy, but I, I think I pitched it in 2010 to Disney. So it took a while to kind of get it going. And, and actually right now we're uh, writing our fourth season. So it's very nice. exciting. So were you creating this show kind of with Disney in mind or, you know, I guess the question would be if you create a show and you present it to a network and say, you know, Nickelodeon or somebody is interested, would you have to go back and change the tone of the show? Or is it like, nope, this was for Disney. I created this for Disney and that was just there from the beginning for you. You know, actually, uh, the, f the first place I pitched it was Cartoon Network. Okay. Uh, I had it there for a little bit. I had it at Nickelodeon for a little bit. And uh, I would say, uh, you know, over the course of it sort of being at different places, and I think just me evolving, what I like evolving, and I think every each time I pitched it, it would change a little bit. Um, and then actually when I pitched it to Disney, um, they had a few suggestions sort of early on, which changed some of the, the directions of it. Uh, but I feel like the core of it was always, you know, what I wanted to be, and the changes were never like, like one of the things was they wanted the characters to be a little older. I had them a little younger initially, um, some things like that, but yeah. Cool. They were all babies. <laughs> yeah, the star the baby babies. I. <laughs> 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 you know, I'll, I'll say that the show, I feel like, really works for Disney because it does have the magic element um, and, uh, yeah, and, and the real fantasy element. And what was exciting, too, is when I, I took it to Disney, they were really excited about doing a show with a female-led character, which not everybody else was super excited about that I pitched it to. So, um, Really? Yeah. That's... Um, now, was there, no, seriously, I, that surprises me because I feel like that's like kind of a thing everybody's looking for today is female-led projects. I know I mean, somebody who made a pirate show about female pirates. It was like all these little female pirates. It was the cutest thing, and I was so excited about it, and I was like, I want to do it. And then I was like, did you get notes? And he's like, yeah, they want him to be <laughs> <No>. boys. <laughs> and he's like, it's called pirates. <laughs> and so that's going to be a problem. And I was like, what? Anyway. Oh, goodness. <laughs> 
fun. <laughs> well, Rachel, how did you become involved with this project and, and what drew you to it? Um, I Well, I was working at a talent agency a few years ago, oh, close to like five years ago, and um, got a call from Disney asking if I wanted to come in working as a talent coordinator. Uh, so I came in for an interview. I met with Sarah Sherman, who was a uh, casting director of the show at the time. So. Uh, this whole cast, everything uh, is all due to Sarah. So um, I was working under her and uh, I've been working on the show ever since. Nice. No, um, I'm sure we have a lot of VO actors here tonight. Yes. Yes. OK, cool. Uh, what is the process like for you when you get the script? Do you kind of look at it and, and kind of make a short list of people you'd like to reach out to or? Uh, well, we, we take a look at all the scripts and we see, you know, which are our open roles and which are the roles that have already been assigned. And, uh, you know, depending on if it's a guest role, a recurring role, depending on what the role is. Um, asks of, we'll either go out and get auditions, uh, we'll, uh, Darren and I will brainstorm, come up with lists uh, to see if it's a, a sound they're looking for or a personality. Um, it's a lot of teamwork and we, we, we work together to sort of figure out who's gonna bring the character to life the best and uh, take it from there. Cool. A lot of auditions. Yeah. <laughs> now for the actors, uh, how did you first hear about this project and was it just a normal audition process? Any fun audition stories? We can go right down the line here. Um, I, gosh, so <clears throat> I remember getting the call that I booked this job in October of 2013. Um, but I also remember when I got the sides for this role, I was like, man, this guy looks familiar. I swear that I have auditioned for this before. And so I went back through all, all my old audition sides cause I keep everything because I'm horrible. Cause he's a VO know. nerd. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I realized that I don't, and I don't, maybe Darren, you have like a timeline for this, but it, like if you did a first round of auditions or maybe Rachel, you know, but it was like, I feel like it was like in 2012 or something. And he wasn't named Marco Diaz. He was named something completely different, Soul but it, yeah. yeah. So what? So, Soul so Juan. Funny. Another, another, another suggestion of changing. Again, not, okay, it's a different name, not yeah, a big yeah. deal. <laughs> but yeah, so, it, but it came to me pretty much like any other audition did, and then, you know, callback process and all that stuff at Disney and reading with Eden Shear, uh, the pilot script in front of uh, like a million executives and everything, so. Was Eden attached from the beginning, or was she somebody that did the typical audition process? Well, Eden is on ABC's uh, The Middle. Yeah, she's a star butterfly. Yeah, she she tried out too, and actually, um, especially with Star and Marco, they were very, you know, probably some of the trickiest characters to cast because they are, you know, our main characters, and 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 they have to have good chemistry together. And they were just like, uh, you know, I don't know, finding those particulars. And I I remember with 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 Eden, it was like we tried out so many people, and 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 a lot of them were really great, but but they just I don't know, a lot of them were maybe sounding like. Uh, too princessy or, or pretty or, or you know like 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 star is so complicated because she's really fun and bubbly but she's really not stupid in any way you know so uh, I did the scratch for it while you were looking for Eden right you did you did star in a in a Nickelodeon like two minute pilot that I did with star oh. when she was younger when she I was totally like a, forgot yeah. that and don't right, awesome. see the things we discover here Sorry. where is it Let's watch it. The lost. And I've hated Eden ever. No, I'm not yeah. <laughs> She's so wonderful. <laughs> but of course, now great doing Jackie and Queen Moon, who I, I didn't uh, showcase a Queen Moon episode in the fourth that we played because the show is, is big and has this big cast. And like Moon is a character that just like, as the show goes on, becomes more and more and more of like a bigger and bigger character and just more complex. It started and out so tiny. And I was also playing Marco's mom, wasn't I? When that, they were bigger in the... There was Marco's mom and dad at one point, and I thought I was Marco's mom at one point. I don't think you were ever Look Marco's at all the, mom. This is about the parts that Gray has lost. Um, no. <laughs> I feel like I was. I was like Mrs. Diaz, wasn't I? Maybe in the pi the, 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 the first pilot or something. Yeah, I don't know. I remember I, I, at some point I remember being, or maybe just even reading. We all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought Jackie was going to be this tiny little part because she just skated through one scene, and they were like, go ahead and do that skater girl line. I was like, what's up, star? And then like, and then she turned into now it's Starco and Marco and <laughs> Darko. well, and that's really something that 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 you know is so exciting about doing a show that that keeps going and and uh, you know like like with Star one of the things that I get really excited about is just that we can tell all these different stories and like have all these different interesting characters and actually like with Kelly we played the first episode that Kelly is in which is you know this great little surprise where you have this kind of uh, you know like. 
uh, uh, oh my God, almost like a fry guy looking character, you know, like this fuzzy character that then is this cute girl. And, and I just love like, like the voice that Dana brought to it and just like the way the character liked it. And it was like, okay, we have to bring this character back. And that's a character that has gotten like bigger and bigger as the seasons go on. So, so sometimes it will be like these smaller things that then are just like so interesting. We want to keep going back to them. So, Gray, what was the audition process like for you? Just normal audition? Any fun stories? I, for this, I just remember it being, well, I had been the star before, so I kind of knew the projects, but I, and I knew they were looking for a younger a young girl to play star. And um, and I, I, I remember the queen part was pretty small, too, right? I think. I don't think she was a very big character. I don't no, know. She definitely, like, evolved a yeah, lot. Yeah, I mean, this is, I have to say, and I told Darren it's not, I don't say this. I mean, I'm not just saying this because I'm on this panel, but this has, Queen Moon has been absolutely one of my absolute very favorite characters to ever do. It's just, the writing is incredible and the arc and just, and I fact, there aren't a lot of cartoons where you really get to just really stretch your wings and like go, wow, okay, this is like some heavy duty stuff here, you know? And so, and I just became, the, my, I have a 10 month old daughter. I have two boys, but I just had a daughter and I was, I'm thinking, wow, that, that mother daughter dynamic, this is all my future. Gosh, I hope she's a good girl and I don't have to fight with her. That's so cool. Anyway. That's so <laughs> cool. That, if that's one of your favorite roles, that's really saying something. Because if you don't know, I believe you have thousands of voices. You've, I mean, you've done a lot of voiceover work. So to say this is one of your favorites, that's a very impressive statement. Very that's nice. Great. I take credit. <laughs> <laughs> and there aren't a lot of female creators, too. I can count on one other finger the amount of people. Lauren Faust, I'm working with her and Darren. And I have to say, I wish I could, I wish I could count on more. Move to two hands, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so Dana and Ryder, any fun audition stories or just the typical thing for you? Well, for me, I was actually, uh, they were adding a character to the Lion Guard and I was going through a bunch of auditions through that process and I think the character ended up not even being added to the Lion Guard, but I went in so many times and um, I think they were in need of a Kelly and they were like, oh, I know, Dana. So I was just sort of thrust into it without... Darren, even knowing, I think I just showed up and they were like, okay, Dana's going to do this. Well, and I don't remember specifically, but I bet Rachel it. played me samples yeah. from the different things. Cause we I definitely used your Lion Guard yeah. audition to book you on Star. Yeah, yes, I yeah. Yes, I did. We don't always, we don't always do auditions just because it's like, you know. Well, I don't know, just sometimes you don't need to. I mean, that's one of the things that's like so awesome with working with Rachel is we'll have these meetings once a week and, and we'll talk about, okay, these, these are the characters we have coming up. And then she'll go and she'll like find me clips and find me like other tryouts. So oftentimes we don't even need to do a, you know, need to do an audition if we don't have to, you know, if it's like, oh, this is so this is mad perfect. about that. People are always like, I didn't even see that audition come in. And I'm like, well, I was doing another thing. And they just said, hey, can you do this? And then that character that I did one line just grew, you know, but but yeah, so so my friends sometimes are mad at me that, you know, same type. They're like, why didn't I see that audition? I need to fire my agent. I never get these same. And I'm like, no, I just did a pilot a long time ago. And then they knew me from that. You know, it's just I would say it probably wouldn't hurt to have a great reel of voices online, you know, because mm -hmm. that does make stuff easier sometimes. <laughs> Uh, Ryder, your turn. Uh, yeah, no, not not a real story. I mean, you know, my voice just stopped at age 13. So <laughs> Disney brings me in for like every 13-year-old boy role um, pretty consistently. Um, and that's, I, you know, I, I was, I, I had to look this up actually because I was trying to remember how this happened. I was, I was, I would always get like right down to the wire, be like me and three other people. And they would, Disney would always be like, it's you and three other guys for the starring role. And I never got it. And the week before I went back and looked at the right e emails, the week before I auditioned for this role, I got dropped on my voiceover agent. So the dream, <laughs> Keep the dream alive, people. Yeah. That's ten percent that I get to keep. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was like it was one of those like classic. Like, of course, just keep the dream alive. Just keep going. It never, you know. I so, love that. That's yeah. awesome. We all want those agent I revenge stories. Yeah. It's like a pretty woman. It's like a uh, big mistake. Yeah. Big. Because my, I have the email from my manager being like, "Do you want this to go through?" Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "No, they just dropped me last week. Yeah. Screw them. I'm going on this audition on my own." And then I came back. I was like, "It was really fun." Yeah. Sure enough, that's amazing. Um, Glad you did. Because yeah, I mean, I, the, again, like the characters, you know, it's like with Tom, he needed to be like like cool but really sensitive, you know. And I feel like you've got this really like like very naturally have that, that torn sense, knee you know? and a scarf. That's yeah, what we needed. Yeah, we needed both. So the, both of those perfect. things. <laughs> I do remember when we brought you in, um, I don't even think we need to, I don't even think Darren needed to hear any of the auditions back. She was like, yeah, it's Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. 
Now, um, th these days, you know, there's so many, there's a couple different ways to audition. You do it at home or you go into the agency and do it there. How did you guys do it? I'm kind of curious. Any of you home auditioners and were you directed or directing yourself? Uh, I guess we'll just go down the line again. Um, I always go into my agency. I just like it. Um, sometimes if I have nothing else going on that day, it's the thing that like gets me dressed in the morning. <laughs> And I feel like I've accomplished something like right out the right out the gate. Uh, so I always go into my agency, um, but I do have a home set up. Sometimes they'll call and need something super to happen today. Something came up super last minute. So I have both, but I do like to go in and be directed. And I think like being on a show is such a collaborative. You know, you'd like to think like, oh, I'm an artist. I get to do what I want. But really, it like an animated project is such a collaborative thing that for me, I find going into my agency and working with a booth director and all that kind of stuff is like training almost for when you're actually working on something. So I like, I like working with people. I got lazier and lazier as technology happened. Because so I would first I started driving to my agency, but in LA it takes an hour and a half to get there, and then an hour and a half that was three hours out of your day. And then when I had kids, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the local place, which you know, there, you know how a lot of people that was like VO and Go or whatever. So then I was like, I'm gonna go to a local place and save myself some time. But still, uh, and then my husband produces music, so he built this state of the art studio at our house. And I'm like, finally now I don't have to drive to Studio City, which wasn't that much. And then I, and then, but then I got so lazy that I was like, I don't want to put a robe on and go down to the studio. I'm gonna <laughs> now I just plug an Apogee one into my iPad and so I now I pretty much lay there in my robe and do my auditions it's turning into wall E is what I'm saying folks I mean just wheel me around I'll just do my auditions on my scooter anyway um I do both sometimes I go into my agency and other times in my car with a blanket over my head and I put together really good auditions I just joined the cast of another show and I, my audition was in my car with a blanket over my head, so. <laughs> I've never booked a job by recording at home, so I, I totally believe in going in too. Like, I think it's about the energy in the room and feedback and improv if you can do it. And, you know, I just, that's, that's the, the fun part of the job for me. So that's the only way I've ever gotten to work. Yeah, it's interesting because it's kind of become sort of a requirement to be tech savvy as a voice actor these days, which can be sort of frustrating because sometimes actors aren't exactly tech savvy. So it's just interesting how it's become um, part of the kind of a, a requirement now. Do you feel that way uh, as well when it comes to casting that I don't do you can you tell I guess? Oh, I can definitely tell. Um, I can definitely tell when when someone is in a car without a blanket over their head when they when I can uh, you know if they're in a bathroom you hear you hear the sound echoing the toilet um, flushing I, the toilet flushing uh, you know I hear Gray turning her lights on and off um, the most of the time that I can tell when there's you know a car driving by or when there's other noise so my my big feedback to people who are auditioning at home is just listen back to your audition if it hurts your ears it's probably gonna hurt mine does it really, like, can you find a good performance through that anyway? Does that really bother um, you if the quality is not the greatest, but the performance is? When I say bad quality, normally I mean, like, sometimes there's a lot of really static, or if it's, if I can't hear what you're saying, which does happen, which is what I mean by listen back to your audition, because sometimes it's way off, that will, I can't, and if I can't hear your performance, then that you know, takes it off the plate right there. But if there's a car driving by or if there's noises here and there, I can definitely still hear your performance in it and we'll definitely take a listen to it. It's still considered. You're in your bed, the blanket's right there. Yeah, just <laughs> throw it over your head. I just, I just started adding my own car noises just so they would think. He's working all the time. Yeah, he so can't busy. be bothered to get we to need a that studio. Guy. <laughs> 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 ching, ching in the background. Uh, wow, Rachel. Um, now, in the live-action world, there becomes a thing. You know, when you're getting close to booking something, you have to test for a network. Is there anything like that in the voiceover world? Um, yeah, definitely. I remember when we were, uh, you know, choosing our our, our Marco. Uh, you know, we whoop, whoop. we we made sure. You know, we made sure that the actors had chemistry. Uh, so we brought them in to work together and sort of see how they play off of each other and their energy in the room. Um, you know, and you definitely want to go into a room, you know, with with your uh, executives and uh, your EPs. Uh, you want to give them your options. You don't want to, you know, force anyone into a role that's not right for it. And so, yeah, you you want to make sure that there's options that you present. So there's there's um, yeah. 
And, and it doesn't matter how long. I've been doing this for like 22 years or something, and I still, I have friends who are like, I'm offer only, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not. I go to auditions all the time, and sometimes I'm like, can't you just play? I mean, don't you know? You don't know I can't, you know? But still, I mean, I was at a callback, a third callback for a Disney thing, and I was there for an hour yesterday doing improv and singing and I mean just doing anything they, they didn't really have a lot written so they're like do you have any ideas thank goodness I had done a lot of research on it, it was a certain dialect and I'm like and all these little like catchphrases and like things that it's like a different kind of dialect and I had it all just, and I thought I'm over preparing I'm too nervous I should just but then I was so glad because they're like what are your ideas and I was like if I hadn't done that I'd be like not anything what are your ideas yeah so it still happens like an hour long uh, Rachel, uh, since we have a lot of VO actors here, uh, what exactly, what is it that really catches your attention in an audition? And are there any pet peeves aside from, you know, not hearing the voice? That um, you know, we're really looking for who's going to, you know, bring the character to life. Who's going to bring that character off the page? Um, who's going to read the sides um, and, and vocalize what's not written? You know, we don't always write laugh or chuckle or you know, breathe. But it's little things like that that really bring the character to life that not everybody else is doing because it's not written. So those are definitely the things that we're looking for. Um, pet peeves. Uh, maybe people who really don't prepare. Uh, you know, it takes, you know, sometimes we're really busy. We got a lot of people that we're getting through and you can definitely tell when someone comes in the room. And you know, some people are really good at cold reads you know yourself. If you're not great at that, don't set yourself up for that. Um, but yeah, I don't really have too many pet peeves. You know, we're, we're always open to hear different ideas and different takes on things. So yeah, we're um, always open. We always hear those uh, horror stories for VO actors that are, you know, oh, they listen to three seconds of the audition and then hit forward. You know, how many seconds do you listen to? <laughs> um, well, sometimes we do have a lot of auditions to listen to, um, but we're definitely there's definitely things that we're looking for. And if I can tell right off the bat that you're n that that's you know, if I'm looking for a 16 year old and I hear a 30 year old right off the bat, it's you know we will skip on to the next one. I'll definitely listen to more than three seconds. Usually we'll you know play a little off the top, the middle, the back end. You know we'll sort of because people do. Uh, have more than one take when they when they send their audition. So we do try to listen to snippets of it if if it's an automatic, you know, definitely not what we were asking for. We'll definitely, uh, you know, fast forward and pick places in the audition to to listen to. But we listen to every audition that comes in. So. Uh, so for Darren and Rachel, what set these actors apart? What was it about them that got them the roles that they uh, ended up getting? Bribes. Well, you know, I mean, I, I was kind of talking a little bit about, um, you know, some people specifically. It's, it's, there, the the show. There, there's a there's a very specificity about it, and you just like by listening to it, sometimes you find it, and it's awesome. And part of like, yeah. So Rachel's getting the like hundreds of auditions, and you know, listening to stuff all the time. And then when we talk about the character, usually she'll bring me maybe like six options, you know. And usually there's somebody in there that's like, yeah, that sounds great. This person sounds really cool. Let's do it. And of course, that's what we've been doing more lately now that we're not casting like our very big characters. Um, and then earlier on, we were casting some of the bigger characters and we were having, um, uh, you know, more auditions and things. Yeah, I mean, usually it was pretty obvious when somebody came in and it was like, oh, you know what, that's, uh, that's, that's Marco or that's Star, or that's, you know, um, I don't know, it's hard to describe. I, it, there's just something when you have a character in your mind and then you hear it that, that just feels right. Question. Sure. Ponyhead is freaking brilliant. I can't remember what the actress's name is. Jenny, uh, Jenny Slate. Slate. She is it's Ponyhead. Crazy, oh yeah. my god, it's so good. And I was wondering, did you have that kind of like that kind of girl, you know, in your head, or did she just come in and do that? Because that's it's brilliant. She just kind of came in and did that. I See? mean, and, it's just so good. <laughs> and Jenny, Jenny crazy up so much because I because she does, you know, she's. Uh, there's all these variants to Jenny, right? So it's like every time she comes in, and she comes in quite a bit, and it's always like, okay, wait, what did I do on this? And then she hears it, and then it'll make her laugh. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> yes. And everyone else. Yeah, yeah, and she's doing a ton of improv, you know, um, which which is always cool, and which I know different shows, you know, have different degrees on, and definitely on Star. 
we really like improv, like, but I would say that that's sort of the ideal scenario. Like usually we have with every line, our actors do the line like three times and then we give notes if necessary. Um, but it's really nice, I think, when the actor says the line as written one time <laughs> and then can can like play with it, you know, and, and say it in their own way or even try out something else. That's totally awesome. And we oftentimes, I mean, I would say most of the time, we'll use something that just feels more natural to the actor. Uh, but yes, yeah, sometimes you get actors that don't eat, love reading the line. I, I used to be like that. When I first started out, I hardly ever did what was written. And finally, one day, the guy goes, great, can we just get one as written, please? Just one. Um, because I, I got my first part by improving, so then I thought improv is the answer I'm hilarious you know and um the, the writers are hilarious too <laughs> so but I usually do two as written and then like you know I throw in my own little thing and sometimes I'm like it's really funny they're like yeah but it's just wrong for it and I'm like okay all right but yeah uh, I was gonna ask all of you if you record together or individually but I gotta say in the green room you were like literally introducing yourselves to each other so apparently you never record together, it sounds like. It's, uh, it's super rare for us to record together. I think uh, Ryder and I did a, we did that, the, the, the that lovely that duet. That lovely duet. <laughs> An amazing song. Together, <laughs> yes. Uh, man. Thank you. Still my favorite record I think singer. I've ever been to. And I've uh, been to a lot of records. <laughs> so nervous. I, I personally, yes, I personally have never been more frightened Neither one of them wanted to sing. What? Yes. I am so serious. I, I, okay, look, my older brother works in the music industry. He is a VP of A&R for Sony. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, maybe 12. And he was getting ready in the bathroom. This is before he became a VP. But I just like, that's the kind of person he became, you know? So he's always been like good at music. And I remember he's always saying and stuff. And I walked up to him in the bathroom and I was like, bro, tell me if this is good. And I sang something, oh, no. and he goes, <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> and that has stuck with me. I have not been able to shake that. Wherever you are. Just kidding. He's in Nashville. I know where he is. Has he, has he seen this episode? Uh, I think he has seen this episode, yes. But what's funny about this episode is when, when I walked in, and I found out that Ryder and I were going to be recording together, he walked in, and he looked just as scared as I was feeling. <laughs> And I was like, okay, dude, let's do this. It was Together. a bromant. It was a bromant. Together, yeah. It was totally, it was a, did you say it was a bromant? Yeah, yeah we, we had a bromant. So, uh, Ryder, your voice has changed since the Gavroche days, yeah, I guess. Exactly. No, yeah. seriously, yeah, that, I, that's the thing, is that people think I can sing, because I did Les Mis, it was my first professional job, I was, when I was at Gavroche as a kid, but, like, I never could even sing. I mean, Gavroche just basically raps, like, you know, <laughs> it's not really singing, and so, but everyone always is like, oh, you're a kid, you're, and, and especially when you're a kid actor, it's like, you dance, and you sing, and you, it's like, no, I can't dance, I can't <laughs> sing, I'm just an actor, and, yeah. But you always, I mean, that's the thing, you always, you, you learn to sing, people. You get confident in singing, because they throw it at you. Every job I've ever had, I've always had a moment where it's like, well, you could sing, right? And it's like, and it's just such a hang up. I mean, obviously I can throw myself into it if I had more confidence, but like, it's, it's such, it's such my issue, you know? Like, we I did just it, bro. Over. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Well, there is quite a bit of singing in the show overall, so was that part of the audition process as well? It's, it kind of sounds like no. Oh, on Star? There's, a, you know, I actually wouldn't say there's a ton of singing. I think maybe just the ones that we picked were, uh, yeah, there's, um, there's been moments, but we're not, I mean, some cartoons, it's like really built in. It's like, there's going to be song every episode. We usually do maybe like a couple each season. Okay. Um, well, and then after Ryder and I did our thing, they were like, okay, well, let's get Patrick Stump to do the next thing. <laughs> they got, like the lead singer of Fall Out Boy. It's like, yeah, we've, we're done with those guys. Let's. <laughs> So since y'all are recording individually, how, about how long does it take actually to finish an episode? Just recording the voices. Oh, like per, uh, well, actually, you've probably got some, like, like, I feel like the way that we schedule time is, is kind of a minute a line, right? I well, do you have all so, the episodes yeah. ready, I guess? So you're kind of recording the whole season at once, or? No, no, we're going okay. an episode at a time. And, and something, uh, <laughs> this is kind of a cartoon-specific thing, and, and then something specific to Star. But, you know, in animation, they're sort of scripted shows and board-driven shows. Uh, and scripted shows are pretty straightforward. It's like there's a script, and, and you read the script. And then board-driven shows are crazy. <laughs> and <laughs> there's like, uh, oh, gosh, the other examples, SpongeBob and, you know, Ren and Stimpy and Adventure Time and then, you know, Star's board-driven, too. So... 
we're actually, uh, we don't write scripts. We have outlines and then our storyboard artist writes the dialogue and then we create a script off of their storyboard, uh, which is a fun process. I really enjoy it. That's always, you know, coming from the, the artist side, that's sort of, I think you get a more visual show and, uh, and and just it's it's fun, but I think it does make it like an extra crazy for Rachel for just casting for our voice just actors. A bit, just a little bit. Yeah, because uh, oftentimes we're recording with something that really isn't a hundred percent finished. So it's like we're recording off of what the storyboard artist did, but myself and my directors still haven't done a pass. So our actors, but you know, it's also like again, that's where like some of the cool improv comes in because we still have wiggle room at that point. So we let our actors play, and we and we take all that and we build an animatic and then we're continuing to do changes and then we have the, the, a lot of, of you know quite a bit of ADR too when we get back because we have to make changes sort of after we're recording and uh yeah it all works out though it all comes together <laughs> oftentimes she has to explain what sometimes she's like you know what let's just watch it because I can't it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah, she's like you're playing a crazy squirrel or I played that koala thing that threw the axe and she was like let me just, let's just show it to you because it's this little person and he just like you know just anyway so yeah it's hard to explain I did an episode today and Brett literally handed me a page of rewrites so he just handed me a handwritten script <laughs> with everything we crossed out and just words written on him like oh okay I know and that's it's, it's uh, and I'm so sorry because yeah this happens a lot too we're like literally it'll be like an hour before recording somebody to be like I'm sorry but we updated the script and, you know. uh, but you know what it, it all comes together and I think that's sort of, it's part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a lot of fun. No, I'm just kidding. Well, uh, we have had a couple of uh, recessions where we'll be, you know, 15, 20 minutes into a record, and then I'll be like, oh, new script. Okay. <laughs> for, this, for the episode we are recording right now. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's probably part of the reason we're recording people separately, too, is it's just like there's a lot of sort of organizing and moving parts, and, um, and it's just a little bit easier. And also, you know, our actors are very busy. You all are very busy. So, you know, it's like trying to get everybody in when we can. And that's the other thing Rachel is doing all the time is like scheduling everybody and keeping everybody on track and paying attention to all of these episodes and when they're going out and when they're coming back in and all the different stages. And her job is crazy. So I feel like <laughs> like a round of applause for Rachel. <laughs> Oh, well, my next question was actually how long do the actors have with the script before they record, but, but it, it sounds like seconds. Um, it, I mean, is something, I guess an outline is delivered to you? In uh, no, they're, they're, getting a, they're getting a script. It just it tends to shift Change, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would we, say that. We, that, that we send them a final script, but that doesn't mean that script doesn't get revised. Yeah. Or final. read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd say like 80% of the time though, the night before, or like the day before we're given, oh. or at least me, complete script. I have any children. I don't, I can't, I, I don't, I don't go over it. I, sometimes I try to read it really quickly in the green room, but um, I don't, I feel bad about it. I, they're always like, did you read the script? And I'm like, mm -hmm. and then they, I think to myself, please don't ask me anything about it. <laughs> and there are some directors who know me really well and know that I didn't really read the script for auditions I prepare. Once you have the job, I'm like, oh, I'll just read it real quick, right? But, um, <laughs> But there's a director that's like, did you read the script? And I'm like, I looked at, I kind of, I, I looked over a few things, you know, and then she'll just kind of know. And then through, before I read, she's like, and so anyway, now you're in the, now you're in the prom and you guys are in the fight and then you're, they're doing like really nice, like a little overview. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that part. <laughs> anyway. Well, but you know, you know what's funny though is a lot of times we'll have you know actors come in and they're maybe just coming in for one episode to do a voice and and uh, usually they've never seen the show, so it's like usually they come in and the first thing I always ask is like, oh, have you seen the show? And usually it's like, nah. so I kind of have my little like, okay, this is sort of the overview. Um, and actually, I kind of I have a story about Weird Al because he came in and did a voice, and he and which was amazing, and I love Weird Al. And he came in and and I was like, you know, okay, have you seen the show? Expecting him to have not seen the show and then explain it. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. And he's like talking to me about it and I was like oh my gosh does your does your like does your daughter watch the show because I know he has a kid the kind of the same age, which is maybe a weird thing to know about him, but, or the right age, but, uh, but, he, follow but, you on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. but he was, he was like, he was like, no, I got this job. So I watched the show and I was like, oh, that's so, that's so awesome. You know? So more, I mean, more people should do that. Well, and I maybe. don't know the people I definitely prepare because I don't want them to think I'm an asshole, but you, I, you already know I'm an asshole. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true. So basically, Gray takes every shortcut she can, is what it sounds like. Honestly, by the time hey, my last works. kid is in bed, I'm just like, hey, yeah. I'm tired. It works. I've tried to watch shows I want to watch, and I get in bed, and I've, I've seen like the first five minutes of the new Curb season like uh, 10 times before I'm like, what happened? It's morning. You know? oh, shoot, that's a really good beginning episode. Anyway. Uh, so once you guys get the script, what's the prep process like for you? And how does it differ from on-camera stuff? Because a lot of you work on-camera as well. Oh, it's completely different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is it's the greatest job in the world. You know, you just, you don't have to worry about much, you, you know, uh, especially when you already have the character, right? I mean, like, when you know what your character voice is and you just read it and... I mean, I honestly, I, I flip through the script very quickly before I get in there because it's it's also like, that's what's so great about voiceover is that you can be spontaneous. You can be improvisational. It's like, it's almost better the less prepared you are once you, you know, once you get into that room. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's very little prep and that's what's great about this job. I just did an episode of Scorpion where I played um, a prosecuting attorney and I must have studied for hours, seven, eight. I woke up, I dreamed of those lines. But it's so fun with this because it can be organic and you can just sort of flip through it, basically. And I think that makes the character more fresh and exciting. And it sounds like an excuse to say it's fresher when you don't read through it. You know how Oprah would be like, well, I just wanted to watch it with you, all of you for the first time. It's like, oh, Oprah, you just didn't want to watch it on your off hours. Anyway, but um, <laughs> but, but, but it really is true because sometimes there's a read-through that people, some directors do a read-through, and then when they actually are recording you, they're like, great, can you do it like you did in the read-through? And I'm like, no, I can't because you milked all the excitement out of it, and now you're going to get the stale old read. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, I guess... I should read less. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> well, but you, you know what too, like with Star, you know how we, like we're saying like we don't really have the actors working together in the same room often, but you, but if we've like, let's just say we recorded Eden the day before, we'll usually play her for Adam to read off of. So you can still get a little bit of that natural like back and forth too. And I think kind of seeing what some of the other actors did, like oftentimes we'll play another actor if it's like, okay, we need to like, this is the energy level that, that this person was at. And just because they happen to go first, now you get to play off of them, you know? So I don't know, I think it's still, you kind of, that helps with the organic thing too, I think. No, please, to, no, please. Do that. Okay, I just cool. I wanted to see if I'd throw you off the game. No. Every time you do it, we're going to be like, let's have a game. Uh, Darren, can you take us through the process for an episode from like very beginning blank piece of paper to finished episode released? A quick, you know, a quick version. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I was just I was just uh, in Amsterdam and I got which was super cool and I at an animation festival and I got to do that and it took an hour and a half. That was my whole presentation, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So so um, we write an outline. So so on on Star uh, in pre production, I have a team of about forty five, and it's people that do all different jobs, and we need that many people because every single Monday we're starting a new episode. Like that's how fast they have to go. Uh, so every Monday we're starting a new episode, and then the process of each episode probably takes about nine months. But all the episodes are stacking because they're you know, we're starting one every Monday. So it's like, uh, we have to finish an outline every week. So that's kind of your first step. And then it goes into storyboards. Um, and I've got five storyboard teams that are two people each. And, um, and it's taking them uh, five weeks to storyboard the episode. And then I'm checking in with them and they're doing pitches all through then. Um, and then uh, it goes into the animatic phase and that's about uh, six weeks. And that's when we're recording actors and getting them into the animatic. And that's that kind of, you know, that process that like keep changing as we're trying to like finish this animatic within that kind of short six week time. Uh, and then it's uh, going into our art department, right? And then they're, you know, you, like you see how beautiful those backgrounds are. They're having like one week to do all the layouts per episode and then one week to do all the paintings per episode. It's four people on layout, four people on paint. I got two character designers, prop designer, effects designer, uh, you know, and they're getting a week each for each of their parts per episode. Then it goes to Korea and uh, then our animators in Korea spend um, three months on it and they're hand drawing. I mean, one of those studios, each studio works a little differently, but one of those studios, is literally uh, drawing with ink on paper. <laughs> I've been there, I've seen it, they're awesome. Uh, and then we're getting it back and we're starting our post process, you know, which is like we're doing music and sound and uh, the composer on the show is amazing, Brian Kim. And it's like, I get to work with everybody in all the phases and I get to work with all the amazing actors. Um, then we're doing the ADR. So it's like this big process, like animation is kind of a, 
it's kind of a, a a beast. I feel like I'm used to it now after four seasons. I mean, it's kind of it gets kind of fun. I remember at the beginning it was very scary. <laughs> Um, now, for the actors, did uh, have the voices changed a bit from your audition? I know Ryder, you always say you just go in with your voice, but do, do you ever try anything no, else? I, I, I think Tom, uh, there was a different character. Tom was a little more angry the first, I feel like the first version of the Blood Moon Ball. More like, angry? He, he, yeah, he wow. like be turned into a giant baby and like, right? Wasn't there like, like a, a big, big demon Yeah, baby and I, th I, I think Tom was only supposed to last that one episode originally. <laughs> and I, have really, I remember I just blew my voice out like every single session it was like and I'd come home and I'm like I can't talk because he was always yelling and now he's like much more of a mellow like he's star's boyfriend right he's just kind of like he's cool so oh uh, ex-boyfriend ex ex uh there's yeah well Tom you know which which is like part of the thing that's really fun on the show is we like to do these these character arcs so it's like Tom you know his whole deal was was yeah, he like, you know, he's he's a demon, so he's got all these demons inside him, and it's like he's really trying to be like a good guy, but you know, he's filled with all these angry little demons, so he like keeps trying to like work on himself, and he has this like anger management. That was the guy in the white tiger, you know, his helper, and uh, you know, and he's come a long way. He's come a long way. <laughs> Uh, the rest of you were you. How did you come up with these? Vo like, how do you find the voice? I guess. Uh, for me, I, I love when uh, I get an image of the character with the sides. Sometimes it doesn't happen, which is really annoying. Stop doing that, whoever you are. Um, Agreed. But that is sort of just how I... That, I mean, obviously, you're reading what they want the character to sound like and all that stuff. You get a description of it. But for me, I'm very visual. And when I saw Marco, I was like, ah, this guy, he looks like a, he looks like a nice little guy. <laughs> and that was, that was that. Yeah. yeah the picture, definitely. With Moon, you know, I just thought, thought I'd just, I was watching a lot of Downton Abbey, and I, and I decided to, Star, I need to talk to you right now, and I just got, it was like, a little bit of the Dowager and a little bit, <laughs> she's, but she's young, but she's younger, because I think my Moon is actually pretty hot, um, when she takes her hair down, sometimes she gets, we just did an episode where she got woken up in the middle of the night, I was like, look at Moon, um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> But, um, and for Jackie, she got really super butch for a while, because I was playing this other character in a different totally different thing at the same studio though and for some reason I guess it just got into me and I just kind of Jackie started like really you know just kind of getting down deep in there so uh, they were like um you know what we need to redo like three episodes because we didn't realize but you've gotten your voice sounds so different so yeah they played me and I was like oh, oh yeah she's a little bit more like that you know so anyway uh, Dana how about for you I'm kind of visual so I thought Kelly was really adorably weird and so <laughs> that's sort of what I went with <laughs> Uh, we got, I think, a few minutes, yes? A few minutes, okay, cool. We got some Twitter submitted questions. Uh, for uh, Rachel, for programs featuring child performers, what happens when a child that is in the cast, uh, what happens to them when their voice changes, like in the middle of a season or something? Yeah, that happens. Um, it happens all the time. I worked on Jake and the Neverland Pirates, was one of my shows, um, and I had five Jakes. We went through five Jakes. So it's, it's, a, it's a voice match process. Uh, usually what we do is we get um, a voice sample of, uh, you know, when, we, when that character first appeared or, you know, where that, where that character is in the moment of the show. Um, and I will send that voice sample out to, my, to the agents and say, hey, do you have any kids that can match this voice um, as opposed to looking for a, you know, finding a voice. It's we're actually matching that specific voice and, and it happens all the time. Uh, another question from uh, Josie. Uh, any advice or suggestions for actors aspiring to get into animation voiceover for anybody here? What was the question? It's full. It's full. There's no room. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do your auditions in bed and... Uh, <laughs> terrible if I should not be doing this panel. Any advice from any of you or? I say do a lot of theater because I feel like I, I have a theater background and I was, I've been, I, well, yeah, I didn't do it. I'm a terrible at improv actually. I mean, I'm okay for auditions, but not like real improv where you're like, how did they think of that? I'm terrible at that. Um, but I've been doing theater since I was a little kid and I'm sure everybody's done some theater. And I just feel like it translates really well to voiceover because you, or for, for animation because you, you can be anything. You can be the dog. You can be the old lady. You can be the, you know, a, a different sex. You can be like, I mean, it's just, and, and in theater, I feel like you get prepared for that because you can play animals and old people. It, you know, that disbelief is there. Um, yeah. I think also just watching what's out and what's on and things that have been on and stuff, that's, that's what I've always done. It's a really great excuse to watch cartoons all the time. 
It's like, this is research. Leave me alone. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, that, that's, that's what I like to do. I would also say, what, you know, I, I follow what Grace said. Just get out there and perform. Have fun. Um, improv is really great so take improv classes acting classes you know acting is 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 a craft so you know practice 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 i talk to so many people all the time i do conventions and people will come up and go i want to be an actor i want to do voice and i go oh what are you doing now are you in are you in they're like well no not right now and i'm like oh okay well you don't just do this you know you have to you know i don't know and it was funny do you, this you don't just do, well you don't just step in and go i'm gonna be on cartoons now I, you know you just have to like kind of it has to you know i don't know you have to be acting your whole life and then kind of yeah I don't know. you didn't start already then you're out of luck whoever that is <laughs> tell them <laughs> no and when you i haven't was started you have to do it your whole life <laughs> the only thing that's different about now is i used to count my lines when i was a little girl in theater i'd be like i have 14 lines i have 14 lines you know and then the, the director would go great you know what? we're gonna give that one line to her and i was like oh, i have 13 <laughs> lines now i have 13 lines and i didn't even do anything wrong i mean i was like in my head and now i'm like i only have two lines yes! <laughs> you know <laughs> it all pays the same folks anyway <laughs> Well, you know, I'll say we, we look at a lot of, uh, like, yeah, comedians. I mean, you were saying improv, and, like, we listen to a lot of that stuff. Um, and I know Rachel goes to a lot of, like, you know, comedy shows and stuff like that and is always, like, trying to find new talent. And um, Do you look at resumes as much in the animation world? Um, like, when you're listening a to... What? A res... res, res. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, do, do, does... I resume. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do I look at resumes? Yeah, like if you're listening to a voice and you're like, oh, I, I kind of like that one. Would you like pull someone's resume or IMDb and be like, let's see what they did? Or are you really going by that? Um, sometimes I will look at people's resumes just to sort of see if they've, uh, you know, if they're in the animation game. Uh, but for the most part, no, I'm just looking for the right voice and the right performer. So a resume isn't a deal breaker for me by any means. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we'll take a look just to see, you know, your your history. But it's definitely not a deal breaker for for me. I have a question. Go ahead. Do you ever look at people's social media these days? I, I, <laughs> the you're asking the wrong person. Me, no. <laughs> um, no. Dang it. I have to say, I think you should do YouTube stuff if you can. Like, get, do, create your own content. And, I, and I'm not saying that from experience because I am the least technical person ever. But my 10-year-old son started a YouTube channel and he got tons of auditions. He, he went to like... To produce, I mean, not to producers, but like to like, ne I, see, I haven't even done it. He tested for like a major show on television from his YouTube videos. And now he's doing a show, at, he's doing Vampirina at Disney. He's, he's on Loud House. He's, and that's like all in the last like six months. They contacted us and said, we're interested in your son. We saw his YouTube videos and I didn't even have an agent. So I'm I, I've never done that, but I'm saying people should do that. So <laughs> if I had known that. How old's your son? 10. Okay, he's 10. So if you have any kids younger than 10, start voice matching her son because eventually. <laughs> anyway, before we wrap things up here, Gray, I was told to ask you about your one woman Wizard of Oz. Oh or what is this? When I was a little girl, I used to, I was obsessed with the Wizard of Oz. And I did, that was the first time I started trying to do impressions. I was like, oh, I love that movie. I want to do that voice. And so. And then it, I, all through junior high and high school, I was the, they, even at my reunion, they call me Dorothy because I used to do, I used to do all of our teachers and everyone I met, I would just do their voice. So, but my, I, I, to, to the wizard, I goes, I want to go home. I want to go home. And I'm Uncle Henry. I'm frightened. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Oh, I'm not a witch at all. I'm just a little girl. It's all right. It's all right. You may only come out and thank her. As mayor of Munchkin City in the county of the land of Oz, I welcome you most eagerly. But we've got to verify it legally to see if she is morally, ethically, physically, spiritually, positively, absolutely, undeniably, unreliably dead. As good and I vouch for her. I've thoroughly examined her. And she's not only merely dead, but she is quite sincerely dead. <laughs> killed my sister was it you that dog is a menace community i haven't taken a sheriff make sure he's destroyed oh you can't take him oh you can't put him up put him up i get up both hands <laughs> 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 okay. uh it's not gonna get better than that folks guys star versus the forces of evil thank you guys so much for coming out thank you thank you it's lovely